In this tutorial, we're going to do some cutouts and some blending modes to be able to use a couple of different photos and combine them into a single composition. For this tutorial, there is already a Photoshop file that includes all the images you're going to need. So you go ahead and open that from uh, the tutorials folder. And this one is called cutoutblending.psd. You can go ahead and open that. And that's already presented in the Photoshop format. You can see that there are some layers that exist there. Um, you can hide them. You can see what is in each of them, first of all. Um, but you're going to want to hide all the ones except Merle Hall to get started. You're not going to have to move these pictures around. Um, they've already been added to the document and placed for you um, because those are steps we have already done in previous tutorials. Now we're on step two in the written instructions. We're going to go ahead and make the sky in this picture um, transparent. So you can see the sky there. We'll zoom in a little bit so we can see that easier. And for this we're going to go ahead and use the magic wand tool. Um, this is up in the very top selection of tools. There's a family of tools. Again, to access the family you just click and hold. And when we click on the sky with the magic wand, if you get something like this, that means that you aren't on the right layer. So even though it is showing the right picture, you're not on the right layer over here in your layers panel. So deselect that, make sure you're on the Merle Hall layer, click in the sky, and you'll see that a bunch of it is automatically selected. And go ahead and hit delete or backspace on your computer and it automatically deletes. We'll delete this little spot over here as well. That should be all it takes. Um, but you'll notice there's also this little bit of tree sticking up in the sky that we don't need. So we're also going to use the eraser tool, which is over here. And make sure you have this set to something with a pretty... Uh, the two options for the eraser are the size and the hardness. Um, if you have a, a less hardness, it will have kind of blurry edges. So for this, we want to have pretty hard edges. Um, we're going to go over here. You'll have to... Uh, deselect the selection that's currently there, um, either by going to select, deselect, or using the keyboard shortcut, and then we'll use our eraser tool to just erase that little bit in the sky. We're going to go ahead and hide this image now and move on to the cougar picture in the cougar layer. So again, click the eyeball and then click that layer so that's where we're working. This image is also going to become a cutout. <clears throat> there are two ways that we're going to be doing this. The magic wand tool, we can try it out, but it doesn't work super well in this instance because too much of the background is very similar in color to the cougar. So um, instead of doing that, we're going to do a different technique, and there are two different ones you can pick from. I'm going to demonstrate both of them by making a copy of this layer. And this is something you can do too if you'd like to try it out both ways. So first I'm going to use the magnetic lasso tool. This belongs in the lasso family of tools. And you can pick anywhere you want to start around the cougar and you click in one place. And now you can just drag. You don't have to hold down. And what you're doing is kind of tracing around this edge of where you want the cutout to be. It's pretty good about picking up differences in small areas. You can also click if you know there's a point where it's going to be a little tricky. And if you're noticing, I'm not necessarily getting all the edges perfect here. Some little bits are getting cut off that we're going to want. And that's okay. It doesn't have to be perfect now because we'll be able to go back and adjust those spots in just a moment once we get all the way around the shape. So we're going to go all the way around here. The bottom doesn't matter so much because that's going to be hidden in our final composition. And when you get back to the beginning, you can click and that turns into a selection. Now we need to zoom in to fix some of those spots that didn't get selected exactly right. Let's focus on the top of this cougar's head here. So with the same tool selected, you can either hold down um, you can hold down shift to add to the selection. In this case, we're going to do that. And we're just going to kind of click. You can use multiple clicks to get exactly the spot you want selected. And then you can sort of just complete that shape. And that adds it to the selection. On, if you want to take away from the selection, 
if you got some extra that you didn't really need, like we got a little bit of extra background down here, you can hold down Alt That's on Windows, it's a command on Macs, and then that takes away that extra little bit of, of space that we don't need. So we'll do that in a few more places. You'll want to make sure that your cutout is precise as possible, including some of these areas that are a little bit difficult, like around the ears, um, where the color of the ear um, is very similar to the color of the back. You can also use this in conjunction with the other selection tools, um, if that ever makes things easier. Uh, for example, you might use the elliptical marquee tool to add something up here on the ear, for example. That's not necessarily the best option, but that's something you can do. Once you have your cutout exactly the way you want it, you can go ahead and go to Select, Modify, and Feather. And we're just going to make the feather radius one pixel. We don't want this very blurry around the edges, but one pixel will help us kind of ease things in and out um, to make our cutout look a little better in the end. Say OK. You won't be able to see anything immediately. Then go up to Layer, New, and Layer via Copy. And now you'll see that layer appear if we hide the original picture and zoom back out. Now we have our cutout. I'm going to go ahead and hide that and do it the other way as well um, with, with our Cougar picture. So this is the one that we did using the magnetic lasso. And we'll do another one. Again, you don't have to try both of these options, but it's a good idea to maybe try them both because um, they work very similarly and it's largely a matter of preference. This time we're going to use the pen tool, which is down here. Um, farther down. The pen tool is um, similarly you start just by clicking and you can just click along the outline. The pen tool makes use of vector graphics which we'll be going into depth with in unit 2 of this course. And one of the most powerful things about vector graphics is you can make these curves. So if at any point you click and then hold down and drag a little bit, it makes a curve for you. That can take some time to get used to. You can also just click around the edges um, frequently to make little dots. And we're just going to click all the way around here. If you don't use curves, you'll want to click make a lot of little clicks to make sure that it doesn't look too jagged when you're done. And along the bottom doesn't matter as much because that part is going to be hidden in our final composition. When you click back to where you started in this case, instead of creating a selection right away, it just shows you this outline with a lot of points. Now we're going to go over to the Paths tab in the Layers, in the layers panel, and you'll see that there's this little work path that has been created that looks um, almost exactly like a miniature version of the shape you just drew. We're going to go ahead and save that. The main benefit of using the pen tool is that you can go back and do it again. So if you accidentally lose your selection, you can always come back to this Paths tab as long as you've saved it, and it will be saved there and you can say Make Selection from this little menu on the top. And you can do that at any point. You can change the feather radius. At this point we still want it to be 1. I'm going to say OK. Now that makes the selection. We'll go back to our Layers panel, and again, we'll go to Layer, New, Layer via Copy, and we can hide the original and see our new cutout there. Either way works similarly. This is the Pen Tool cutout, and you can see that they are very similar, um, and especially if you're very precise. Um, neither technique is necessarily better. Um, it's mostly a matter of personal preference, and in some cases one might work more easily than the other. We're going to go ahead and hide both of those for now. We're not going to need them both eventually, um, but we will make one of them visible later on in this tutorial. 
Now we're going to move on to the map layer, which is the very bottom. So we'll make that visible and click on that. Um, this is an old top topographical map of the Pullman region. And with the map layer selected, we're going to make an adjustment layer. So we're going to click on that little icon, circle icon below the layers panel and click Hue Saturation. We're going to click the button for Colorize. Make sure that Hue is all the way to the right or the left so that we have a red color. Move the saturation down to about 15. And that's all we're going to do with the map layer for now. But we're going to keep that visible as we go on to the next step. We're going to select the grunge layer at the very top and click the eyeball to make that visible. In the layers panel, you can change the opacity of this layer. We're going to change it to 60. And now we're going to change the blending mode, which is from this drop down that's also in the layers panel. And we're going to change this to multiply. You can see that there are many different types of blending options um, that do slightly different things, and you can play around with them to see what they do. Uh, they work better based on kind of what images you have and what you're trying to do with them. Next, we're going to make this only apply, we're going to give sort of a gradient to this image. So we're going to click this button at the bottom that's sort of a rectangle with a circle in it at the bottom of the layers panel. So we're going to click that. And that creates a layer mask next to uh, our image, our texture image. And we're going to use the gradient tool um, over here, which is in the same family as your paint bucket. And you want to make sure that you have black and white selected in your um, swatches. And what we're going to do, we might want to zoom out for this, is draw a gradient on here, making sure that this layer selected, and you can draw it as many times as you need to to get it right. Um, but what we want to do is make it so that the gradient starts with black in the bottom corner and goes toward white in the top. And this works as any other mask, where what is white, the mask applies, and what is black, um, the mask does not apply. So uh, this image on its own will only show up in the parts that are white on this, and since we use a gradient, it kind of makes it a gentle transition. Now at the very top here, we're going to make a new layer. And this one we're going to name Border. We're going to use the Paint Bucket tool. So going back to the Fill tool and clicking the Paint Bucket. And we're going to fill this with black. Obviously we're not going to keep it this way or we wouldn't be able to see anything else in this document. Um, but we're going to go ahead and click the little thumbnail in the Layers panel to bring up the Layer Style options. And we're going to select the stroke option and click on that. And we're going to set the stroke to about 25 pixels. We're going to make sure that the position is inside and make sure that the color of this border is white and then say OK. We still can't really see what's underneath. Back in the layers panel, we're going to change the fill here to zero. So now the only thing showing about this layer is the border rather than the inside color. Now it's time to make all the layers visible so we can actually see what's going on. I'm just going to choose one of our cougar cutouts. And we're going to go back to the Merle Hall layer and add a quick effect just to make sure that that stands out from the background a little bit. So we're going to click on the thumbnail to bring up the layer styles. We're going to click Drop Shadow. We're going to click on that to bring up its options. We're going to change the Blend Mode to Overlay. I'm going to change the angle so that it's coming up from the bottom, somewhere around six, negative 60. And we want the size to be about 21, 20 to 25 pixels. And the distance should be similar. And that just creates a little shadow in between the building and the cougar to separate them. Make sure you save your final project. Um, Make sure you save this as a copy so that you know that this is the one that you have completed as opposed to the one you got at the very beginning. And then you'll be ready to move on to the final step of this tutorial series.